Have you ever considered what the point of being a Christian is? Oh, sure. I know when we confess Jesus as our Savior, we get born again and our sins are all forgiven. I mean, absolutely, that's a wonderful gift that God has given to us. But I think there's something more that God is looking for or from us. And if we look in John chapter 15, verse 16 and 17, I want to read you what Jesus said. He said, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit. See, I believe that really is the point of why God is calling us to accept Jesus Christ, so that we bear fruit. Because I think that no matter what we're doing in life, we're always bearing some kind of fruit. Now, if you're like me, you occasionally get the opportunity to go into the grocery store and you see all the wonderful fruit that they have out on display. If you want a banana, are you going to go up and get the green one, the nastiest looking banana that they've got there? Probably not. Or if you buy the green one, you're going to buy it, but if you get it home and you try to eat it right away, it's probably not going to taste that good. You're going to leave it and let it sit on the counter for a few days so that it ripens. And that's the point. We're producing fruit all the time, but the fruit that we produce, sometimes it needs time to ripen. And that's the exact same thing in the spiritual realm too. I've got a grapefruit here that a friend of mine had at the office. And if I was to go and pick this grapefruit, if it had a bunch of mold and splotches on it, then we know it's bad fruit. Yet on the other hand, when you see this grapefruit the way it is right here, this looks delicious. I really want to bite into this. In the same way, we can produce rotten fruit or we can produce grapefruit. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5. And in verse 19 it says, The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord. Now hang on, I know this is getting kind of heavy. But jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you as I did before, those that who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. I mean, that sounds like some pretty rotten fruit. And I know to some degree we're probably all guilty of some of those things at some time in our life. But God has called us to produce righteous fruit, godly fruit. And we can do it because he's given us a spirit that the very nature of that spirit inside of us, when we confess Jesus as our Lord and confess him that he's been raised from the dead, we receive that spirit and that spirit inside of us is warring against our sin nature, against our flesh to produce righteous fruit. Let's go on in Galatians chapter 5 and read. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit. It's con contrasting now the fruit of the Spirit against the fleshly fruit. And it says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. My goodness, who wouldn't want to eat from a tree that's got that kind of fruit? Gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. That's the point. As a Christian, that's the kind of fruit that we're supposed to be producing. You know, there's, when there is ever envy or factions or division, James tells us it's because of our own flesh, because of the things inside us that war against the things of God. We're to pursue these kinds of fruit because we can produce them. But it takes a conscious will. It takes us making the choice to live this way. We can produce great fruit or we can produce rotten fruit. And the choice is ours. In John chapter 15, verse 8, Jesus said, This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. You know, I think it's just one of the saddest things in Christianity today that too many people who claim to be Christians are not demonstrating the fruit of righteousness, fruit that demonstrates their disciples of Christ. We need to produce this kind of righteous fruit. He says that if you do, that's what it means to be one of his disciples. And as I said in John chapter 15, verse 16, we didn't choose him, he chose us. But he chose us and appointed us to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, 
not fruit that that will fall off the tree, not fruit that's right that will that isn't ripe. And sometimes we might get frustrated because I know that there's times in my life where there's things that it just takes time for it to just takes time for things to ripen. You know, if I try to press myself into a situation too quick, usually it doesn't work. And sometimes I've been my biggest enemy because I've frustrated myself. I think things are supposed to be a certain way when I decide they're supposed to be a certain way. But I've learned to be able to rest and have confidence in God and to pursue the things that God, I believe, that God wants me to, to pursue. And as I do, then my life manifests those things of, of peace and love and kindness because I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to be an apple tree when I'm a pear tree. I'm trying to just be what, I'm, what I am, allowing what the gifts and calling that God has put in me to come out, to allow my fruit to mature and to ripen. And generally, you know a tree is mature when it reproduces itself. Are you seeing yourself reproduced in others? Well, Jesus Christ's point was that he wants to reproduce himself through us. In the same way, when we reach maturity as Christians, we should be discipling others. We should be mentoring others. This is not a solo game. Christianity is a team sport. And I, it's not about just going to church and sitting and listening and, and receiving you know, great teachings. I heard a person say the other day that you know, too many Christians are fat on the Word. In other words, they're eating the Word, but they're not exercising the Word. If all I do is eat and never expend energy, I'm going to get fat and bloated. But if what I eat, I exercise and I, and I do, then you'll find that you're going to be lean and you're going to be fit. And there's too many Christians that think the point is studying the Word and reading the Word. But the point of God's heart in the Word is to do the Word. And one of the doings is to produce good fruit. And I can see the fruit I'm producing when I'm with others and there's the effects that is happening in their lives. When I'm speaking a word fitly spoken, when my love is producing enthusiasm and excitement in other people, and I know that they're coming in, into a greater relationship to Jesus Christ because I'm serving them, I'm loving them, I'm doing what I can. In Romans chapter 7, Verse 4, it says, So, my brothers, you also died to the law through the body of Christ, that you might belong to another, to him who was raised from the dead, in order that we might bear fruit to God. Let's go out and let's bear good fruit, love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, goodness, faith, all of the fruit of the Spirit of Galatians 5.22. Let's bear good fruit.